Conservatives are facing an emotionally charged battle, a clash with some of Canada's former soldiers. A delegation of veterans say they were, quote, bushwhacked by Veterans Affairs Minister Julian Fantino, and they want him gone. I would like to call for Mr. Fantino's resignation. His resignation or fired. Mr. Harper and his Conservatives best be prepared for the next election. Because as that I threat said, came in an evening news conference called by the vets. The men were initially incensed over service cuts, and Fantino seemed to make matters worse by turning up late to discuss the matter. Julian Fantino has now issued an apology. He's blaming his tardiness on a long cabinet meeting, but many former soldiers had come from across the country to meet him, and they say they were treated disrespectfully. Paul Davis is a veteran from Newfoundland and Labrador. He had a heated exchange with Fantino last night, and he joins us live from Ottawa. So, Mr. Davis, uh, thanks for being with us today. The, the minister has apologized for showing up late. Do you accept that apology? Uh, no, I don't accept that apology. I think he's just trying to worm his way out of the position that he put himself in. Well, he says he was at a cabinet meeting and that he did eventually show up and try to talk to you. Why is the apology not acceptable? Uh, they were at a meeting for a vote. He could have got one of his ministers because they only had one vote. He should have put one of his own ministers in there to do the vote and he should have come to the meeting as was scheduled. It was hard enough to get a meeting with him and then a slap in the face by not turning up and sending other people in his place to t try and persuade us to in the way that he thinks things should be done. He, he was very clear last night when he did come in the room that the decision has been made and that uh, the, the government is not going to change its mind. The government is convinced that it's providing overall more services to veterans and that despite closing these eight centers, that overall it's providing more. What's your response to that? Well, he's, uh, we have nine offices across Canada and they all will close this Friday. He says uh, Service Canada, which has 600 offices in Canada, will now serve us. Our first problem is they're not qualified to serve us. Uh, we have people with special needs, and we have people in our offices now who can handle these special needs. Uh, they're not allowed to open any of our files. It's against the law for them to open our files to see what our problems are and talk to us about them. I've asked him if he's going to train 600 people to take over to replace these other people. And he kind of stopped on that because he said, we're going to have 600 places to go, so we're going to have to have 600 trained people there. So I said, maybe we should take the people that we got that you're now going to lay off who are trained to work with veterans and put them in these spots. But he said, no, what he's going to do is train new people. And, of course, we don't believe he's going to put 600 people in training to look after us. You still sound emotional about this today. I know it's an emotional issue, and this is a government that has prided itself on the way it has dealt with veterans in this country. Is there anything that can be done now that can take the sting out of this for you? Is it just something that you have to suck up because this government's made its decision? Well, we're not going to suck it up. We're going to keep working and trying to make sure that they change their mind even if it's down the road. But we are going to campaign to have them out of office in 2015. We have promises from the other two parties that if they're elected, they will put our offices back so we have somewhere to go and uh, with all the needs that we have. So you're going to uh, try to organize a, a national campaign against the Conservatives as, as veterans? Will you use the legions, et cetera, to do that? No, we will not use the word legion as such. We'll just ask veterans. The legion is not involved in this at all. It's veterans who got together to fight. And what about the minister himself? Are you still going to press for his resignation? Oh, definitely. He has uh, no idea about what goes on with the veterans. He doesn't want to meet with people. He just makes up his own mind. He's a bully. And he tried to bully us yesterday, and it did not work. Do you think that, um, is there anything that he could have done, though, that would have pleased you, given that he said the decision's made and that he wasn't going to change his mind? Well, there's nothing. Obviously, he don't want to do anything for us. See, the only thing that he could have done for us is say, we'll keep your offices open because we need them, and we really do need them. 
We have thousands and thousands of veterans across Canada, and they don't want to go into a Service Canada office and speak to the people in that are not are trained. They go to their offices wherever they are, like ours in Cornerbrook, Newfoundland, and we can walk in and we can talk to someone. We know all the people in there, and they know what our problems are, and they can help us. We'll be going to a different place. Nobody knows us, don't know anything about us, and all they'll say is fill out these forms and make some phone calls. That don't work. They had a schedule they were following and said they couldn't, they couldn't meet them. They already had a press conference planned. So my, my, my impression, Evan, having worked on these issues since I left the Canadian Forces, working with veterans, is that they had that press conference planned and they already had their answer ready for the press conference. That's just my impression. That's Conservative MP Aaron O'Toole. That's right, he's a veteran. And he's just saying he believes the veterans who met yesterday with Julian Fantino had an agenda. Uh, it was part of a union organization, and they already had an answer. And, uh, well, you heard what he had to say about it. Well, Veterans Affairs Minister Julian Fantino apologized for the incident yesterday. Mm -hmm. We showed you that. Uh, that ended in a verbal concentration uh, confrontation. What's the veterans' response? They're with me right now. You can probably hear them. Uh, were yesterday's events orchestrated or as part of some union agenda? Joining me now, Afghan veteran Bruce Moncour. You were on the program yesterday, and I appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, Vietnam me. veteran Ron Clark's here. Also, we carried the press conference live, uh, and we've got all the, all the vets here uh, joining us now. Paul Davis is here, and uh, Roy Lamore is here, a World War II vet. Uh, gentlemen, thanks to all of you for being here. I appreciate it very much. Uh, let's go around. Uh, the minister apologized. Do you accept his apology? Uh, I think it's a little late for apologies. I think that uh, you, you apologize so many times, and you keep doing the same thing. It's, it, it loses a lot of it. Uh, the words lose a lot of weight. Uh, at the same time, though, uh, everybody's human, and they make mistakes. Uh, so... Uh, I just want to see these uh, these offices be being reopened and then uh, a show of good faith, and I think then we can go we can work from there. The government says they won't reopen the office. Uh, the opposition called for the minister Fantino to resign. He's not resigning. What's your take on that? Well, that's too bad he's not resigning. I uh, I also uh, asked that he resign. If not resign, I have his boss fire him. Um, I think Mr. Fantino blew it yesterday. I mean, blew it. He blew it with us, and uh, I understand we have a. <laughs> We had one of the people who were in the room with us, uh, not in the consultation there, but uh, in the other room where we were supposed to have the... Uh, Aaron O'Toole. Yes, Aaron O'Toole. And I understand what he's saying is the union is behind this. Well, Mr. O'Toole is full of it, right up to his ears. Uh, the veterans, the veterans are the ones who are running this show. Uh, we thank God for the union. Uh, they're behind us. But it's the union workers that, that we are doing this for as well, not just the veterans. But not the union, the workers, the ones that look after us in the offices. They are the ones who are the darlings to us, right? All right, Mr. Davis, do you accept the apology? And what do you make of uh, Mr. O'Toole, Mr. Um, Laurie Hahn, who's saying that this is kind of a setup of a union. You guys had your own agenda. You wouldn't go to dinner with the minister later because it was, um, it was part of your agenda. Well, no, I don't accept his apology again. I'm like the rest. I think it's too late to apologize. The only thing he can do to apologize to us is keep the offices open. As for uh, us refusing to go with them for uh, snacks and things like that, we had other things planned and organized we had to do. Uh, no, the unions aren't behind this. They're helping us out in any way they can because we want their people who are well trained and know how to serve veterans to be there for us. And that won't happen if we lose our offices. Mr. Lamore, what's your take on the Prime Minister also said the Minister apologized and he uh, but he won't open those offices. They're go they'll be closed Friday. He closed his mouth and never might open up offices. He uh, to apologize to a veteran or the, the, one of the persons there was a veteran and fighting another veteran on, on, on TV. That's a disgrace. And to apologize, hey, that'd be the worst thing I'd ever do in my life. Gentlemen, is it, I mean, we carried this press conference. We spoke to you yesterday. Now the minister says he's apologized, it's time to move on. He's actually tried to call you guys at home. Would you take a call from him now? No. You wouldn't take a call no. from him? No. Uh, nope. You wouldn't talk to him? And I got the message uh, that he called the house, yes. And uh, not only me, I guess he called a few of the other gentlemen. Uh, I don't know why. Why would he call us individually? We well, were he, right he here in Ottawa. To, well, he wanted to personally apologize. I guess my point is, well, if, if they don't open those offices, 
What's next then? If you won't talk to the minister, he's not resigning, and the offices are closing, where do you go from here? Uh, we have, uh, there are some constituents in the, uh, the writings that are conservative that we uh, intend to, uh, to rally against uh, for the next upcoming election. We are going to try to put anybody, name a noun, and we put that in there instead of that person. This has become a political <clears throat> movement targeting the conservative government? Yes. Yes, it has, and I'll say that, I'll admit it. Uh, it if it has to go that way, that's the way it's going to go, right? Um, what we're going to do in the meantime, before we attack these guys, we're going to track all the problems that are created for the veterans going to these services officers. We're going to track them. We're going to log them, and we're going to hand them over to the ombudsman and to make sure that the ombudsman knows what's going on. Because he, I specifically heard him say that... Uh, um, if there are any problems, I will report it. I will report on it. So that's what will happen there. The Prime Minister was asked about this, Mr. Davis, in question period, and he said, we've expanded service to veterans. These offices were being not used very much, and it's more efficient. <laughs> Did to, he ever to go, go around and see them? Did he ever get around to do it? Speaking from chamber doesn't mean nothing. Go to these places. Find out how it's worked. Don't tell these stories about uh, it, it's being looked after. It's not. Or we wouldn't be in the predicament right now. As we explained before, the, he says there's going to be a lot more offices for us. Service Canada cannot service us. They uh, do not have the qualifications to go into our files when we go to see them to find out what the problems are. They have no one qualified to speak to people who need to talk about their problems. And they have an office, an open little spot to go into. We are not one-on-one -on -one like it used to be when we walked into our other offices. We didn't have to make appointments. We could walk in and they knew us and we could get things done. All right. Now, have the opposition parties said that they'll reopen these offices? Yes. We had a, the uh, leader of the Liberal Party the other day. Justin Trudeau. Justin. He committed himself. Not only did he commit himself to opening the offices that are closed, he also said if we need to open two or three more, we'll do that as well. All right. Uh, listen, gentlemen. Uh, you've been on the Hill now for two days, and now uh, we've covered this, and we will continue to cover it. I appreciate your perspective. This has become one of the dominant issues in question period, and you've certainly raised a level of attention. I, I have one point, if I can make Real it, please. Quick. Yes, sir. You know, the, the, uh, he says there are 600 offices, services offices. 600 across, points of contact through Service Canada. Points of contact Canada. through Service Canada. That's right. Uh, I don't know who these people are going to be, if it's going to be a Service Canada. And, and don't get me wrong, they're also uh, PSAC workers, and they're good, but... They're not qualified to look after us. And furthermore, he says he's going to put one in each office. That's 600 people. Is he going to train them? Is he going to train them? And if he trains them, 600 people, what's the cost? These are good questions. i, I, I got to leave it here, gentlemen, but I promise you this. We'll continue tracking this, and we will have all of you back. Bruce Moncourt, Ron Clark, Paul Davis, and Roy Lamar, all vets. All were involved in that altercation with the minister, none of them uh, accepting the apology from the minister today. Where does this go from here? Uh, you can see the passions. I know a lot of you are tweeting about this. I know these vets have heard a lot. Uh, we will continue this debate. And gentlemen, I always appreciate your time very much. Thank you so much. Thank you very much.